Last week we saw the launch of the NVIDIA 4080 Super. Mixed reviews from that card. We did see a price drop of £200, which is obviously good, but that now puts it in the bracket of AMD 7900XTX. And I haven't actually covered one of those yet. The highest I've got is the 7800XT, but a big thank you to Scan for sending out this monster, the Tough Edition 7900XTX. So I'm looking forward to checking this out, and then we can potentially get the Super back to do a little bit of a shootout. So as I mentioned, this was sent out by Scan Computers UK, one of the biggest retailers that sell anything to do with computer hardware. They've got some pro audio video gear on there as well. They also have a 3XS range of pre-built systems as we want something for professional use or gaming. They have a absolutely humongous range of products and I'll link them down below. And again, a big thank you for them for sending this out for me to look at. One of the main benefits of the XTX, you can see straight away, 24 gigabytes of memory. The 4080 Super's only got 16, so it's already got a massive step up there. So here we have the XTX Tough Edition from Asus. This is also the OC, and at the time of recording is £1,039, the exact same price as the Super that I covered in my review last week. So let's have a look below, see what else we've got. A bit of information. I'm going to guess this has got one of their little stands in. Yeah, so this just folds out into a little phone stand. We've also got one of the little trading cards, so the Tough 7900 warranty. There's also a little bit about the graphics card holder, a little screwdriver that you can actually use as a stand as well, and a quick start guide. A little Velcro strap under there. So this is a little anti-sag bracket, but you can actually also take it all the way out, and it's got a little screwdriver on the end, so you can install your card and then use the same thing to act as an anti-sag bracket after as well. Pretty nifty. It's also magnetic on the bottom as well. God, this is absolutely monstrous. A lot bigger than the 4070 Ti Tough. Let's have a little quick look. We've got some pills. Let's do these first. These are going to be really satisfying. They look like big ones. Big old one on the back, we'll get to that one in a minute though. But, gosh, so massive. So this is a 352 millimeter length card. Like for example, the Strix. This is the, the biggest card that I've seen yet. You can see just shy of the Strix, although saying that, the little bit that kind of pops out a bit further down is almost the same length. But a ginormous card and it's a thicker one than the Strix as well. They say it's three and a half slots, but I'd say it's like more close to four slots. We've got the Axle Tech fans on the front. These apparently deliver up to 14% more airflow. These fans also have uh, durable bearings in there for better longevity. And then just go underneath, you can see that massive heat sink for cooling. Uh, let's see if we can count those heat pipes actually. So seven heat pipe design. Um, other things to talk about, we've got some RGB on the top here. There's a bit of plastic over that as well. So this is brushed plastic down here. It does look metal, but it is plastic. It is a brushed effect though. I think this is the first card I'm going to be using that's going to have three PCIe cables as well, rather than the single 40 series or two eight pins. So it's going to be nice to have a more beefy card being plugged in with PCIe, the standard cables. Onto the back, we have got a big old back plate and then a final peel. Let's just get this quickly. And we can see that satin back plate and it feels like plastic though not a metal one which is a bit of a shame i believe the 4070 ti is still yeah it's also plastic so no changes there let's just quickly do a little size comparison from the tough edition so xtx on the top and then the 4070 ti on the bottom when i first looked at this i thought this was big for a tough card but apparently not they can get bigger again now we have got a performance mode a quiet mode switch on there the performance mode will give you a base clock of 2,455 with a boost of 2,615. And then the quiet mode will give you a base clock of 2,395 and a boost of 2,565. Now I did find the 4070 Ti to be very quiet even in performance mode anyway. So being this has got a bigger heatsink and bigger fans, I can't see it being very loud anyway. But of course, I'll let you know about that in the conclusion. I've just taken off all the connectors for the IO, but we've got one last pill. There we go, and that reveals our three DisplayPort 1.4 and then our one HDMI 2.1. That will support maximum resolution, again 8K like most other cards, so 7680 by 4320 
four monitors of course as you've got four outputs so an even bigger brother of the 4070 ti tough edition but for now let's get this one into the system and get it tested because i want to see how fast this thing rips so our test system is the Intel 12900K that's at stock on Asus Z690 Hero. We've got 32 gigabytes of Kingston of Fury Beast DDR5 at 5600 megahertz. Cooling is the Corsair H170i Elite LCD. We've got a Seagate Fire CUDA 531 terabyte for storage. And that's all powered by the Fantex Revolt 1000 watt in the EFO Pro 2. So for benchmarks, I've kept the latest results from the runs that I did when I reviewed the 4080 Super, so we've got something to compare to. These are organised by price. We've got the 4080 Strix OC, the most expensive card that I have, which is currently selling at £1,300. And we've got the Asus Tough 4070 Ti, which is £839. First up, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is one of the titles that I found to favour in video cards, but the 7900 XTX came with a 10 FPS higher average on the 4080 in 1440 and then at two frames higher in 4k moving on to ray tracing we see the results closer to what i expected to see with the 7900 xtx having significantly lower performance in both 4040p ray trace and 4k ray traced with starford we see the xtx retaking the lead with 1440p high and 4k results higher than the team green options not by drastic amounts but it's certainly a good result Apex Legends we had almost identical results for 1440p but the XTX seemed to have a little bit of a wobble with that 1% low and then at 4k it's more stable with a higher result as well. Dirt 5 is another game that I've seemed to favour Nvidia and although close in this benchmark the 4080 gaps the 7900 XTX quite considerably in the 1440p run but the XTX manages to hit the NOS button in the 4k result coming in just a few fps behind. Fairly close results in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the results sitting just a few notches up the higher you go, much like if you organise these cards by the price. Crisis Remastered, another Nvidia favouring game, and as expected the 4080 is pulling ahead, but even so the 7900 XTX is very close behind, especially in 4K. Last but not least, Far Cry 6, one of the surprisingly intense games. In 4040p the 7900 XTX is a couple of frames ahead but in 4k it stretches its legs and goes ahead by an average of 12 fps which is surprising considering we usually see closer fps results when moving to 4k not once further apart. So I hope those graphs were helpful in breaking down the performance of the 7900 XTX. If a result didn't have a 1% low on there it just basically didn't give me the information that wasn't available on the benchmarking information. Um, I am going to look to do frame view runs over the built-in benchmarks in future so it get a one percent low whatever test that i do it does take time to sort my testing methodology out though i'm only one person and i've got to try and work that out on top of everything else that comes as being a creator so there's a lot to do um, but i'm sure in time we will get it all finessed down and then again i am reading my script basically off my clipboard so please bear with me i've got quite a lot to say so overall the 7900 xtx especially price to performance is really great. The Strix coming in another £300 extra and it was staying close to, if not overtaking, that card in certain benchmarks. Um, I left the 4080 Super out, like I said, because I want to rerun that in a video of its own and then uh, also do the new testing methodology over the top so you get some 1% lows for certain benchmarks that didn't have them. But if you want a little bit of a spoiler, they're pretty much the same. Uh, so I would just basically look for the games that you want to play if you want to use any of the DLSS or FSR if there's just add them up and see which one you will get more benefit from or the titles that support it and then uh, just go with the one that you're going to get you know get the most out of from that. I tested all the cards as you saw without any of the AI technology so you can see what kind of FPS you can expect straight out of the box and obviously anything is a bonus gives you an idea of the raw performance you can expect and then obviously any AI is on top of that. Testing the card with the side panel on the max temperature was a 82 and we've got an ambient of 21 so down to 61 degrees much on point with the other AMD cards that I've tested. We do have an 84 degree limit on these cards anyway. I also did a 3D Mark 1 you can download this from Steam and test yourself so if you want to compare to this card see what kind of upgrades you're going to get then you can download that for free and run it as well. Then I've also done a price to average FPS of all the results which clearly shows that spending more money doesn't always mean more performance. Other things about the card, the RGB on the side you can set in the appropriate motherboard software. So for example, Asus has Armory Crate, MSI, Mystic Light, Gigabyte, RGB Fusion. You can turn it off as well if you wish, if you don't want any RGB to go on there. Build quality of the card I think is very good, even though it is a plastic outside, still is built very tanky. 
Um, and then the, obviously a big heat sink is working well for the cooling. I didn't hear the fans during the testing as well, so I wouldn't worry about switching over to the quiet mode. It seems to be very quiet as is. And then the other thing is the coil wine or lack thereof. The only time I did notice coil wine was during Crisis Remastered in the menu. That always brings it out of any cars that I've tested, even if it never shows it any other time. I always just, that's the one thing that does bring out the coil wine for some reason. Um, but yeah, not noticeable during gaming, so that's good. I'm overall a beast of a card, and I'm looking forward to using this in several other projects that I've got coming up, so stay tuned, get subscribed and ding the bell so you don't miss those. If you'd like to see any content on the 1700 XT rather than the XTX, then do leave a like on the video, let Scan know that would be something you'll be interested in, then we can try and get one in to cover. It'd be quite interesting to do like a 4070 Ti versus the XT, then also do the 7800 XT versus the XTX and do it all in a chart and things like that. Loads of different options and things that we can do, but just leave a like on the video just to let Scan know that that will be something you'd like to see. Any other questions, comments, leave them in the comments box below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Links will be in the description for this if you want to pick one up. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to Scan for sending this out for me to look at and I'll see you all in the next one.